Welcome back to episode 9 of my Age of Wonders 3 2 unit challenge series, where it's my two heroes uh, versus five Emperor AI opponents. It is now turn 30, uh, and I just had a tasty, tasty wizard tower clear. Uh, it's my first wizard tower clear. So I wanted to show you the true power of my capped out level 15 folks who at this point, you know, I've got this shield on tap. And these numbers don't really show it because I get a lot of defender bonuses and such. I got some uh, double HP and armor stuff coming in. Uh, uh, fire wyvern egg, which will allow for flying, not just running, so I can go from floating to flying, which will be really great. 70, 14, 14. Uh, and I think uh, Monster Slayer has been on there for a bit. Shield, Defender, Armor Piercing, Overwhelm. Uh, most of that is similar. And then over here, uh, we've had that shadow form forever. We have this stuff forever. Oh uh, yeah, currently Guard Breaker from Shrine of the Earth Mother. Um, what else? I think since total awareness has just been other buffs. So some HP, some defense, some resistance. Um, you know, resistances are starting to climb up there. Red Raptor. This, the Shrine to the Earth Mother currently helping with uh, the uh, Blight resistance. Um, so this is what we're looking at. I picked up a nice Cursed Egg, and so uh, we'll see what that turns into. Uh, if it's a spider, that could be really good to go from Life Drain to Greater Life Drain. That'd be really sweet. Sitting on a lot of points. Um, I There's this uh, stuff I use for machines and undead so plus two shock times two and demolisher so it should really help with dealing with machines and uh, to a lesser extent with undead uh, with that lineup uh, so let's check this battle out so you can see uh, the power of this uh, life drain And tireless mechanic. Oh yeah, I had regrowth on these guys from a shrine I was on, so that helped make me even more confident in what was happening here. So I'll slow this down a bit. So I'll just have my rogue up there. Stone skin. So check that out, 26 and 18. Um, so I'm just letting her tank at all, and most of these guys are melee, which works great. Now, I had forgotten that um, with incorporeals, you don't get the, the life drain. It's a decent life drain there. Again, you know, healing back, healing back all of my stuff. So they're stuck on him here. So I'm going to keep him out of the fray, keep him safe, keep him away from this guy. Now he's got last stand. So 33 <laughs> and 21. So, you know, because that's the thing about independent clearings is they won't dispel any of this, right? Unless you have something like this and they get smart about using that. Um, so even, look at that, like so little damage despite them being a T5 because that 33 and 21, and even Pike, Pikeman doing this sort of damage, but between the regrowth, which I didn't even need for this battle, um, and the life drain, just everybody stuck around him, scared to attack. Um, so we'll speed this up a bit. Don't like that. But again, just keep in full health. Just slowly whittling him down, get up in his face so he stops doing those shenanigans. Yeah, so it was pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Warlord was definitely the right pick, I think, for this sort of stuff. So that was the that was the battle I wanted to show. I'm working on thoroughbred mounts plus fifteen. For both of these guys, going to be amazing. So bump them from like 70 to 85, from 70 to 85.
five, that'll be a tremendous bonus. So again, even the Empire upgrade's really nice. Doing some transformed Earth node stuff. Uh, what else is interesting? The Master Cartographer I picked up. Um, and so with that, we can see what's happening. So, you know, I went down here, went here, down here, up through here. Haven't really even bothered with the underground. Well, you can't I mean, it's all explored now, but I'd send a builder down here who probably got destroyed by roaming bands. But I've just been, you know, flowing through here with my builders following, you know, picking up stuff. So, um, and I've been item forging stuff, picking up a little bit more mana because I'm, sometimes I'm not having enough mana to forge the, the next item because it's like 250, 350 mana per item. And so that has been the bottleneck. Money's been fine for most of the game. And this has been uh, creeping up. Let's see, does it show? Yeah, base of these fortress. So fortress is really helping bump that up. That was where the uh, regrowth came from. Perfect placement between these two things. And this for the uh, that and the cave crawling. I am going to go underground. So, uh, but anywho, let's talk about the stuff you want to know. Where are my opponents? Uh, so we got capital, 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 and then capital. So um, and. I don't, I have not yet met them, but, and I'm not super good at this yet, but you can tell stuff uh, by looking at the building types. And so like this to me, I think with the tree stuff, um, is uh, Arch Druid. This is clearly Necromancer. I play a lot of Necromancer, so I recognize that. Um, which sucks, because life drain's not going to work well against that. This, I recognize this ability. That's the, like, mana, mana forge thingy that increases your production by 20%. It's a Dreadnought ability. So again, that sucks. Um, because... It sucks to be versus machines because you can't use the life life steal life drain mechanic. So already one necro and one dreadnought, and that kind of sucks. Um, here I don't know what that is. That might be um, uh, yeah, so somebody. Um, and then this again, Dreadnought. Probably dwarf or goblin. I think this is more dwarf structures. So we actually got a real crappy roll uh, when it comes to the types of classes I'd be up against because we got one Necro and two Dreadnoughts. Um, so with a lot of machines and they will just ram you to death and you can't stay on defense. You got to attack, which drops your guard. Thankfully with the total awareness, that's less of a thing, but yeah, some pretty scary opponents to be against. So I've got to haul ass, um, and kill, knock these guys out. So I'm thinking spatially, this is the closest thing. Go underground here. Hope that their hero is in the vicinity. Take out hero, take out capital. Come back up top, come down here, knock out, knock out, knock out, knock out like this. So go in a circle above ground after taking them out. So that's the plan. And I'm just hoping that their leaders are rel relatively close still, um, rather than like here, because then it's going to be a lot harder to kill leader and headquarters. It's turn 30. It's still pretty early, all things considered. And so generally, I think they're still likely to be in range, reasonable range of their capitals. Um, and you can tell by some of like where spells are and are not. Like where, where you can see the Dreadnought stuff, you can kind of see which direction uh, they've probably gone. Like so, for example, they went back here uh, and, and acquired that. So anywho. Uh, that's some pretty key info, and I just love, love, love the Explorer Specialization for this reason. It just helps make for much more efficient movement.
This is going to be uh, a spicy, I don't know how spicy. There's a lot of, there's plenty of ranged, uh, which sucks for this, but I do want to take them out. So we'll be doing that. But yeah, uh, so this has been episode nine. I'll see you in episode 10.